it is true that while Matsky doesn't address the main argument of the book, he does address a secondary or subsidiary, subsidiary argument of the book, which is that the absence of, of ancestral fossils uh, for the Cambrian animals in the pre-Cambrian represents a mystery. And he says, no, it doesn't represent a mystery because cladistics has established the existence of those ancestral forms, what he calls collateral ancestors of the Cambrian animals, even if the fossil record hasn't documented the existence of those animal forms. Matsky's claim that cladistic analysis can establish the ancestral forms of the Cambrian animals has many problems. And in the epilogue chapter that, is, that I've included in the new version of Darwin's Doubt, the, the paperback version, I've provided a six or seven point critique of his uh, critique of Darwin's Doubt, and, and specifically his claim that cladistics can establish the existence of these ancestors. Well, one of the big problems with Matsky's claim that cladistics can establish the missing ancestral forms of the Cambrian animals is that the method of cladistics actually presupposes an animal tree of life when you apply it to analyzing animal forms. It's, it begs the question that it, it supposedly is, is, is proving. Uh, the method of cladistics works like this. It analyzes the, a, a group of, several groups of animals and it, and it analyzes, compares and contrasts which characters are present in which animals and which ones are absent. And it assumes that the number of what are called shared derived characters that are held in common is an indicator of evolutionary relationships. Specifically, it assumes the greater the number of shared derived characters, the closer the evolutionary relationship, and the more recent the time from which those two groups of animals diverged on an evolutionary tree of life, and, or diverged from a common ancestor. And conversely, it assumes that the fewer the number of shared derived characters that are held in common between two groups of animals, the more distant the evolutionary relationship and the longer the amount of time that has elapsed since those animals uh, diverged uh, from a common ancestor. But notice, in both cases, the method assumes that shared derived characters came from a common ancestor. And you see this when the scientists perform this kind of analysis. They will plug their their data sets, their, about the different character states, into a computer algorithm. And the algorithm is programmed to generate an evolutionary tree. In other words, the, the, the program itself presupposes that there is a branching tree pattern in which major groups of organisms diverge from common ancestors. So the assumption of common ancestry is built into the method itself. And this is a simple point of logic that, that Matsky and other people who use cladistics to reconstruct evolutionary histories elide. They you cannot use a method which presupposes its conclusion to prove the conclusion. And cladistics presupposes the conclusion that there was a common ancestry, or a common ancestor of all animal forms, and so you can't use that method to prove the existence of those, of, of those alleged ancestral organisms. So it doesn't do what Matsky says it, it, it does. It doesn't compensate for lack of fossil evidence. It begs the question as to the origin, or rather, it begs the question as to the existence of ancestral forms. It doesn't prove them.